In a recent tweet, Conor McGregor states he wants a rematch with Floyd Mayweather. Conor McGregor roughly says, Boxing is great. I'm going to relish another go. I challenge Juan Manuel Mayweather to a rematch. I'll see you then, mate. On episode 131 of the Below the Belt podcast, Brendan Scubb exposes Dana White for booking Daniel Cormier versus Stipe 2. All right, probably the bigger news is this right here. Dana White saying that Brock Lesnar told him he's retiring. And because of that, they're moving on with the Stipe, Dude, you know, yeah, Daniel Stipe, Cormier fight. Yeah, which happens in July. You know, you, you know what this reminds me of? Does anyone else feel bad for Stipe, right? So what happens here is Brock Lesnar is that dime piece bombshell. He's that the hot one who you're always chasing. You hooked up with once, but you're trying to wife up. And Stipe is that loyal, well-read, down-to-earth mom, right? And you're like, no, I know. Well, no, I know that's there. Well, but I'm coming up here. I'm aiming for the stars. And then once that fucking superstar Brock Lesnar of a dime piece with tits goes, mm, I'm not into this game. I'm just gonna keep fucking other dudes. Yo, all right, let's settle down with wifey here. That's what happened. So poor Stipe, who's been sitting out this entire time, just been like, dude, please pay attention. I'm over here. Remember, I'm one of the greatest of all time, if not the greatest. I'm over here. Then finally, once Brock went, I'm just going to fucking cock tease you guys. I'm out. The UFC went, Stipe, you're up, buddy. You're up. You're up, pal. Congrats, man. You won. You won the, you, you, you get to rematch that you wanted. Dude, I've been asking this for a year and a half. I, I know. That, this was our plan, though. You know, we just wanted to kind of wait it out. If I'm Steve, I'm like, dude, fuck you guys, man. But you have to take it. Like, all right. Well, I guess. It, it worked out for him. He waited out, right? He waited forever. I, mean, I guess. <laughs> no, no one's seen him fighting forever. Yeah. Still got his title fight. You know who loses in all this? DC. All right. So you're going to fight Steve Bay for a second time. You knocked him out in whatever, three minutes in the first round. Doesn't get any more definitive. Doesn't get any more black and white as that. You beat him. You knocked him out. Now you're supposed to fight Brock Lesnar and get paid so much money, you're going to ride off to the sunset. So Brock's gone. Now you got to fight Stipe again. Probably going to be a tougher fight. Yep. Stipe won't make the same mistakes. There's, and, and the first one was in a blockbuster i don't know the red do you know do we know the ratings now picture this ready for this if you're this is how fuck dc is that and that's a loose term he's still killing it i'm gonna watch the fight but this is how tough this is gonna be so dc versus stipe which is an amazing super fight which i love this matchup for a second time such a big fight right that first super fight did how many just under four hundred thousand. so under so check this out that, and that's not great. I guess anything over 300, the UFC breaks even, does well. But for those guys, it's not life-changing money. So DC versus Stipe, when it was easy to buy pay-per-view in July of last year, the, and that July 7th card, the, right? They put all their marbles, usually that and the New Year's card. So that July is one of the biggest card. The super fight of DC Stipe is fucking huge. That does under 400,000 buys. Now... You're trying to sell me on DC Stipe again. We saw DC already knock him out. Stipe hasn't been relevant since July 7th of 2018. Now you put it behind two paywalls. And you get, you got to sell that thing now. So if when it was easy and it only did under 300 or under, under 400,000 400, buys, think what it's, let's say it probably cuts down in half. Now you have to behind two paywalls. It also messed up with Curtis Blades. He tweeted something out like, you know, screw you, Brock Lesnar, for screwing up the whole division. Listen, I love Curtis Blades. He was never, like, it's just, 
the UFCs they're they're always going to make their money off the Brock Lesnar's the, the those big stars. So that yeah, they're waiting for that. It's not again. It's nothing against Curtis Blades. That's everyone. Mm. I th- I think what happened with Brock, to be honest, is he went, hold on, there's I'm you're gonna have me fight DC and my fans who aren't balls deep in the UFC, they have to go through two paywalls to get to me now. What what did you, what's your last pay per view? Holy fuck, you only did seventy thousand buys. Well, no, dude. That's I do this because I make a shitload of money. You have to give me a guarantee now. And the UFC is probably like, mm, that's not what we do. So he's like, mm, pros cons. And the USADA shit, I'm out. It's too difficult now. Two paywalls, USADA, I'm out. I'm fucking out. It's not worth it to me. You make me jump through too many hoops. Not too many people are going to see this now. I'm out. That's what I think happened. Why else would you have a change of heart this late? What's the one thing that happened since last time Brock Lesnar fought? Go ahead. What's the one thing that's changed? ESPN. It's the only thing that changed. You don't have a change of heart this far down the road. He's probably like, dude, no, this is too difficult for people. I'm out. Not everyone's going to see it. The hardcore WWE fans who want to see me, they're used to, they, they're not buy a pay-per-view. They're not going to pay for fucking all these apps. I'm out. Hmm. That's what I think happened. Do you think they changed the whole, like them getting the pay-per-view buys or a portion of it? How can you not? Because before you didn't make money as a fire until you went over 300,000 buys yeah. to get pay-per-view points. No one's hitting 300,000 buys right now. So, you, you know, so Brock's like, well, what's my deal? Well, we'll do the same deal, but it's behind two paywalls, dude. We can't do the same deal. I need a guarantee because I'm going to launch your network because how, how, how much am I worth the network of all these people buying the subscriptions now? There's, it's a whole different line of communications now. The negotiations, are, especially a guy of Brock Lesnar's level, a guy of Conor McGregor's level, if Ronda Rousey come back, those are the only three that can change the game really. If for them to come back, like, hold on, it's a different game now. Before, with the UFC, I get a point of the pay-per-view money. But now it's behind two paywalls, which my fans are going to have to buy and subscribe to your app, which you guys get paid on. I'm not getting paid on that. That's not my contract. But how, what are, what are my millions of followers, what's that worth to you guys? Now it's more than fighting, because now you're asking them to download the app and be loyal members of your app, which you own, which I don't have part of. So, a guy, so people like Connor, Ronda, and Brock, their managers or agents have to look at this as a different business. Yeah. I'm wondering if they're even telling him the numbers or they're just giving him one flat That's the rate. problem. That's the problem. Because uh, they, might, they might go, hey, Brock, five mil. He's like, five mil? Yeah. To, do, to do what? What's, what, what's the, what is this worth to you down the road? Of all, my, all, all the subscribers coming over from the WWE Network that have to watch us behind two paywalls now. What's that worth? More than $5 million. Yeah. All right, this is about Rory McDonald. After his statement about not wanting to punch people or not sure about punching people anymore, or hurting people, he says he's still gonna fight Neiman Gracie. The fight's on. He's not retiring. He says that's part of God's plan too, to finish out this fight. Uh, he said, to be clear, I'm not retiring from uh, my professional MMA career. I've always been true and honest in the sport i spoke from the heart as for my career at the moment i'm going to move forward in this tournament and compete uh boldly against demon gracie in new york Mexico garden i mean that, that's you know what? again i'd rather be authentic about it how he's like dude I, I just wasn't feeling it tonight i'm not i don't have that killer instinct right now all right i can fuck with that i'd much prefer him being his authentic self being like I, I, i'm gonna still go on and fight gracie like that's that's the goal but you know, I'm not stoked to be doing this right now. I appreciate it, being authentic. Uh, this is Michael Chandler after you heard about Roy McDonald's statement. Uh, unlike Roy McDonald, I talk to my God every day and he's completely fine when he's beating the hell out of people. Yeah, I don't know if there's a God up there who cares what you do. As far as like beating people up, it's competition. If it's for yeah, competition. competition for your family too. My I, so, I think God's so busy. <laughs> if there is one, he's so busy. He's like, dude, I don't give a fuck what, if you submit a guy. What? What are we doing? No, I don't have time to pay attention to that. I get fucking bombers. I get fucking people blowing themselves up. I get starving kids in Africa. I get fucking starving kids in America. What? No, I'm not paying attention to your competition 
even though it's inside an octagon, I know it's the world to you, but there's much bigger problems to solve. Darren Till, he was off social media for a while. He posted this a few days ago and it's kind of bizarre. I'll show you this picture right here. It's a porno. That's it. So it's him breathing it's heavy. Porno? And he commented, he didn't actually put a, a headline. He just commented, fuck what you think. And then he put a taxi cab emoji. And he was apparently in Abu Dhabi. He was doing Instagram stories of him riding in a cab or something in Abu Dhabi. I don't know, man. <laughs> bizarre. It's never good seeing this bizarre shit with these guys. Oh, also yeah. that video with the hairy chest, the sweating, the heavy breathing. Uh, is he in a spa? Is it is this like uh I guess it's just him showing that like he's trying spa? Uh, maybe listen to music. Play it again. Listen to this isn't a gym. Listen to music. Hotel lobby. <laughs> that'd be a, no, that'd be a Thai spa. <laughs> oh yeah, it's like Asian ish yeah. music. Uh, gym. Jim he going at. <laughs> it's a porno, bro. Oh man. After fight night 153, Anthony Smith claims he wants the belt. One thing in common, both up against John Jones in the latest fight. Yeah. Uh, how did you pick up the scraps after your defeat to come back and go up against a you know, contender or a high-ranked fighter? Listen, uh, nothing in my entire life has ever come easy for me. Uh, if you go back and look at my career, there's been lots of ups and there's been lots of downs. And uh, we can all sit around and, and, and think about things when they're not going our way. And we can blame people and we can point fingers and you can you can try to make excuses. But the, the, the sooner you decide that you're done making excuses and you just want to figure it out, then you just got to shut up and put your head down and do it. You know, I, I just put my head down and I just grind. You know, I, I'm, I've said it before and I'll say it now. I'm going to be a world champion or I'm going to die trying. I'm not going to stop. So so all these people, they, they keep talking about me being a fluke or a flash in the pan. You guys are doing yourself a disservice because I'm coming and I'm not going anywhere. I'm not. It, it, until there's a gold belt around my waist, then you can start thinking about what Anthony Smith is going to do next. But until then, it's coming forward and swinging hammers, and I'm going to do what I got to do to get the W. And it, it's not always pretty. You know, I, I, I'm not the prettiest fighter in the world, but I don't have to be because obviously I can be the best. Alexander expresses his post fight thoughts. Very relaxed in this camp and coming up to this fight. When did you start to think that this might be? beginning of the end that you might leave your gloves on the mat here tonight was that a, a spur of the moment decision or have you been thinking about it for a while yes since my my last loss uh, against john uh, i feel that I, I don't do this for money or uh, because i'll you know because of anything else i do this because i want to be the best and i want to beat the best and if i can't do that then it's uh, uh, it is what it is and, and uh, and I lost. I lost to John. That was the third fight, uh, title fight, and I felt like uh, because I, I got a little bit of an injury in that fight, and I felt like I didn't really show what I was uh, uh, my capacity really. So I had some hope in me still, and, and felt that this Anthony Smith would be a great comeback to come back and start climbing again for the. But now I lose to Anthony too, so it feels like it feels like I don't have it in me anymore. You know, it's and it's it's a receipt. I mean, like it's a it's a it's like a confirmation uh, to myself that uh, because I have lost my three title fights, it is what it is. So, and how do you think you will be remembered in Scandinavian MMA if this is the end? No idea. Let's see what people say. I, I don't know. I just I, it's just been an honor and pleasure. To, to be able to represent uh, Sweden and Scandinavia and, uh, on, on the top level of fighting. I remember he's a great fighter. A great guy. If you have not already, hit that subscribe button with its notification bell and leave a comment in the comment box below of what you thought of the video and tune in for more on MMA News Outlet.